Hello. In this video, we will present our paper, Exploring Machine-like Behaviors for Socially Acceptable Robot Navigation in Elevators. My name is Danilo, and along with Priya, we will be presenting this work on behalf of our colleagues Antonieta, Cecil, and Tommaso. We started our work with the objective of defining socially acceptable behaviors for autonomous robots that are meant to share an elevator with humans. This scenario is relevant for our company, as we are working on the new headquarters building in which a fleet of robots like the one visible in the image will be introduced for delivery activities. However, it is also relevant for the introduction of robots in any building meant to be shared with humans. The first question that arose was, what are socially acceptable behaviors for robots in a scenario like this? Indeed, it is a particularly interesting question in this context, as this scenario includes the sharing of limited spaces with humans, certain negotiations of space and priority that require a high level of social competence, and a scenario in which we can find a range of different states that the robot needs to communicate. Finally, we have seen limited work exploring social acceptability in this context. We began our research by conducting an ethnographic study to try to understand how people use the elevators. We looked at the general patterns, including the use of space and artifacts, as well as the non-verbal communication practices. Ethnographers in our team analyzed 16 hour, hours of video data reported in the elevator lobby of our company's building in Korea and indexed a total of 543 events. Their focus was mostly on two points. The strategies used to establish the order of service. For example, in the first image, we see how two people give priority to a third person using a bow, and how people wait alone or in groups. For example, on the second image, we see a group of people waiting for another member before entering in the elevator. From the ethnographic study, we understood that people do not form structured cues, but rather follow a weak first come, first serve principle. In a setting with multiple elevators, like the one we observe, priority is established through position and posture, and may be subject to renegotiation through the use of nonverbal cues. Based on this, we concluded that even if we had the required situation modeling technology, the nuances of the context would still be hard to capture. In fact, the intention of people was not always clear, even for the human observers. This motivated us to explore machine-like behaviors that can overcome some of the limitations of fully imitating human behaviors. Machine-like behaviors should not require complex inferences about the sense social behaviors, but still avoid disrupting the existing routines unlike existing robots that, for example, use loud voice messages to express their intention. Finally, we believe that this approach can limit the illusion of social competence, as the robot behavior will not generate false expectations about its social capabilities. We conducted a body storming session in order, in order to explore our approach and define how machine-like behaviors will look like in this context. The session lasted one hour and included four researchers involved in the project. Inspired by the situations observed during the ethnographic study, we simulated the elevator use and one person at a time took the role of the robot, first enacting a human-like behavior, then discussing what was not feasible for, with our robotic platform or what, what was not considered comfortable. Uh, for example, participants prefer to have the robot on a visible position rather than queuing behind them. Finally, we body storm alternative behaviors, which we consider as input to define a machine-like approach. This activity provided us with guidelines for human behavior and machine-like behavior elements that the robot should display. Next, we conducted an online study to evaluate our approach of adopting machine-like behaviors within our context. We had the following hypothesis. First, people will prefer a clear differentiation of the robot behaviors from the queuing behavior by humans when waiting for the elevator. Second, people will prefer humans to have priority over robots rather than respecting the order of arrival. Third, people will have different position preferences for robots and humans inside the elevator. 
We conducted an online survey study with 223 recruited participants from Korea, US, and France. Our survey included 22 multiple choice questions, followed by mandatory open-ended comments that helped us understand the underlying reasons for their preference. All the collected quantitative results were analyzed to validate our hypothesis and also tested for correlation with participants' characteristics. We collected over 3,600 written comments, which were analyzed using thematic analysis. For queuing, as shown in the figure, we presented two animations. The first one showed the robot taking place among people in an unstructured queue to wait for the elevator, and the second one showed the robot taking a fixed position next to the elevator door. 60% of our participants preferred that a robot takes a fixed position rather than queuing and waiting in a constantly evolving human line. We can validate our first hypothesis based on a test of proportions. Our participants expressed that it was natural for the robot to behave differently. We also found a correlation between previous experience and choice of queuing. People with experience preferred the first option compared to people without experience. We can speculate that participants with prior experience are more aware of the potential disruptiveness of the robot's movements. To understand what people perceive as the correct order of service in this context, we asked questions regarding the participant's willingness to let the robot enter or exit first in different orders of arrival. We found that most people would generally respect the order of arrival to define the priority to enter the elevator. This does not support our second hypothesis, but interestingly, 40% would still claim priority over the robot, even when the robot arrives first. When defining priority to exit a shared elevator, 51% expect the robot to exit last after humans. There are two main reasons for our participants to give priority to humans. One is the ontological difference between humans and robots, and the second is related to the efficiency of elevator use. There is an assumption that the robot will be slow and it will be more efficient to let the humans move first, giving the robot more space and time to perform the movements. We also wanted to understand the most preferred position for the robot inside an elevator and how and why these preferences change between a robot or a human. As seen in the figures, we provided a top view of the elevator divided in a grid identified by letters. Here, participants selected the preferred position for the human or the robot. The corner positions opposite to the butter panels, that is G and A, were most preferred for robots in small elevators, and position M was most preferred in the large elevator. For themselves, corner positions at the back of the elevator were most preferred by the participants. These positions were different from robots as also calculated through the Manhattan distance. This supports a third hypothesis. The reason for different placements was not to be disruptive to humans for entering, exiting, or using the button panel. Please refer to our paper for more details on results. We found that a pure human-like behavior policy for a robot is not feasible as described in our ethnographic observations and not even desirable as highlighted by the body, star body storming and the survey results, especially in this context where the aim is to create a non-experience for a routine activity. We also do not characterize machine-like and human-like as two extreme positions of a spectrum we rather advocate finding the right balance when designing policies that leverage, one, human-like behaviors to have a familiar and efficient interaction with robots and ensure that the robots blend into the social context, and two, machine-like behaviors that better correspond to human preferences and transparently communicate the limits of the robot's ability to handle only certain social interactions based on the technical limitations. We acknowledge that machine-like behaviors are unfamiliar and to successfully introduce them, communication modalities are crucial to convey the intent clearly. Hence, in the future, we want to test different communication modalities that effectively convey the robot's intent and complement our machine-like approach. Furthermore, we plan to integrate the navigation policies and effective communication modalities into a comprehensive service that can be deployed in elevators and tested through in-situ experiments and naturalistic observations. Thank you all for your attention.